the best way to explore what's available in FreedCamp is to go to this page called ADD Owns, mm -hmm. uh, which will always give you an overview of uh, everything we have. And here we have uh, tiles for each feature and uh, some of them will say module. It means that you can turn on and off these things in your account for all of your projects. Like you can, you can turn off gun charts, you can turn off or on subtasks, uh, project templates. Uh, you know, if you don't want your team to use OneDrive or Dropbox, you can turn it off as well, or Google Drive. So these are called modules. Also, we have project applications, and this is something you add to your projects. So these things, and uh, it doesn't mean that all your projects have to be the same. As you can see in my projects, I have different set of applications in each project. And it's okay to start a project, maybe just with discussions uh, with someone, and later on you can add tasks, and you can add calendar, etc. So files is something which is always there because files application added to every project. You cannot remove files, mm -hmm. and it, it it's not only place where you can create folders, subfolders. You can organize your files for a project. It's also a place where you can search all the files attached to your tasks, discussions. Uh, your meetings, etc. So it's kind of a reference, back reference to all files, no matter where they've been attached to, uh, and also a place where you can upload files. That's why you cannot remove it. Even if you're not planning to upload files to your projects, you will always be able to go to files and file, find some you know, PDF or Excel attached to your tasks here and jump to tasks directly from files. So once you found the file, you will see it's attached to a task. You click and it will open you exactly that task where that file was attached. So this is called project applications and uh, you can add, remove them. And this actual page, which is again ADD owns, uh, is a good place to add and remove something to many projects. So if you click, if you click on issue tracker, first of all, you can uh, you can read what this application is about here, mm -hmm. and you can use the set remove button, and uh, you can actually select projects where you want to add it, and teams you want it to access, and then you can save, and you can do it in in all your project groups and projects. Uh, so if you want to add something to multiple projects, if you decided that you will be using this application, for example, it's a good place here rather than manage system, which is another option, which we will talk about a little bit later, manage system. So from ADD owns, you can click on something, check it, maybe add to one project to try, and then if you liked it, add to, to, to more projects. So custom fields is a module, issue tracker, wikis, applications and if you want to read even more than than uh, than marketplace provides you can always go to tutorials and support to help page and this will be project applications so wikis this is documentation for wikis and this is modules this is a relationship and this is another yet another type of applications called project group applications uh, and you will find them here so uh, for example, CRM, invoices, and passwords uh, are group applications, you see? Uh, mm -hmm. And if I click on passwords, if you want to share your passwords with your team, uh, for example, you have you are using certain services, and you need to share securely passwords, uh, you can click Add Remove, and here you will see a list of project groups, rather, and underneath people invited to projects in that group, and you can select who can see the passwords application. So group application is added to the group. So this is a group. These are the projects. Mm -hmm. And here I have CRM and passwords. Here I have just passwords. Again, you can control from this page who can see that application at all. And within passwords application, you can share passwords with particular people. So I can share passwords with, you know, Angel, but not the other guys who can access that uh, application they can they can see it but when i create a password i just tick angel to share particular password with angel others cannot see it something like that on a project board uh, you see this is a project group application mm -hmm. and these are the project applications here 
Oh, okay. So this is shown next to the project group, and these ones are inside the project project applications. So that's one way to discover stuff in FreeCamp, like see like what the functionality, read about it. Uh, so it's added on page to to will give you kind high level overview. In tutorials and support, there are sections for project applications, project group applications, and modules where you can basically check everything in. So the global navigation here is homepage is uh, kind of where we try to innovate and there is a new page coming soon, a new version of this page, uh, a little bit more uh, better layout and uh, bringing more information. But here you have projects, you can rearrange the three top things by drag and drop if you want to put projects, you know, all my work here and project here. So this is important updates uh, and basically assigned to you. If something happens and something assigned to you, it will be here. If someone actually mentioned your name in, in a comment or in a description, uh, it will be here. And you see that it was about seven hours ago. You can jump it from here. So and uh, also if you created something and there are updates there, it says created. From here, you can go to notifications page, which is much more informative page, which is this red. If you have unread updates, you can jump here from by clicking to notification. So it's the same entry point. Uh, so here you have all your updates. And uh, again, they are grouped by importance. So if you've been mentioned, it there are even more. I just have seven on red, it shows me only section. So you see that it's updating task, this update for issue, and uh, there is a new comment here. So you can click, you can now see attachments, you can you can post a comment if you want to reply from directly from here, you don't even need to open it. Or you can just mark it as red as a Google and it will open you another one. So you mark it as red and it goes to next section. If uh, something has updates, which is a new, not new comment. It will say like due date change and reassign. Blah. You don't even need to open it to click to open. Obviously, you can click and and see who actually made the change. But mm -hmm. if task was completed, you don't need even to click to open it. You can just mark it as red, and it just pushes the list. So this is a way how you can catch up with all the updates. Uh, some people sometimes on your team may complain about too many mails sent from Fleet Camp. Uh, so what you can say to them is just suggest them to go to my account, mm -hmm. uh, to notification settings, uh, and they can click here none if if you already have a lot of projects. It will set none here for every view, so you don't need to do it. Uh, you can you can fine tune and. Uh, uh, you know, select some project, no notification, some projects uh, default, some project full. This level is explained here, but if you set none uh, for every value and, and then save, you will not get individual email notifications. Like if someone posted a comment, you will not get email. They still will be there on notifications page. Uh, so if someone prefers to keep the updates in infrared camp rather than be sending you know, to, to the email box, uh, they can set it to none uh, and they catch up with updates by looking in the, in the, into this red uh, balloon uh, to see if the, there is something new. And uh, this one by default, it, it sent daily and it will remind you on everything you need to do, like every person is highly recommended to have this email. By default, it's daily, but you can also set it to to, to weekly, uh, every Monday. But then, if ma if you if you receive it weekly, then everything which was assigned to you on Tuesday, which is due on Friday, you will not get notified. You still will be able to find it in Fred Camp and see, uh, but you can miss it. So better daily because it's just one email. It tells you you have meetings today. Uh, you have these two tasks over you, please fix them, either close or change their dates. And this is a task you're working on today, and this is what you should be doing tomorrow. That's what I say. Again, it's again, it's the the snippet of that information is on homepage in my work. 
10 tasks, 7 events, 0 milestones, 0 issues, 2 CRM tasks. So if you use CRM and you need to call your customers, uh, it, it will be here. So that's the summary. Again, this full daily recap is a page which we mail you every morning. Email will look almost exactly the same as this page. It's just this page, as you change stuff, it will update automatically rather than email we just generated this whatever data we have uh, on every morning and it will contain those tasks even if you already completed after you receive the email email is static once we generated it we cannot change it so uh, you see it says for me for today this is my tasks i need to start this i need to complete this uh, i'm working on this according to frit camp tomorrow i don't need to start to finish anything and then i have next five days so it's seven calendar days covered with what you need to do uh you know i have to complete this on april 15th and then there are some test events i created here <laughs> basically meetings and uh, dates uh they're, they're coming through so this is again easy easy walk from home page if you're already on notification page you can always jump to daily recap from here and go back to notifications here from home page uh, this is a project you can make if you off frequently use some projects maybe if you're a manager uh, you could be managing like 10 or 15 projects, but you participate in actively only in three, you can click a star, make it favorite, and then say, you know, show me the favorites. Uh, so on your home page, you just only have your favorites. And here you have all your projects. If you need to go somewhere else, you can jump directly to, to tasks, to discussions, etc. A link from here leads to project board, uh, which is a kind of, uh, has a, uh, easier version to manage some projects. So generally, if you need to manage your system, you go to manage system, which is here or here or on home page. Uh, it should be here uh, or even here. So it's all the same page manage system for administrators. Uh, but on project board, if you don't want to do something, you know, some some big changes or review who is assigned, who, who has access to what project from a project board, you can just use this tiny cogwheel icon and uh, you can invite someone to a project or you can uh, complete project and archive it and you can easily retrieve and browse archived projects from uh, manage system page it just means that this project is no longer active i don't want people invited to be able to see it in frit camp and i may need uh, to review it later or just complete it just send it to a, to my completed ones and hide it from everyone else uh, edit if you want to change the project group very frequent not only for renaming project but you can also select different project group and move it to the to the different project group so you can move project from here to here between between this project group uh, generally in frit camp on top is a three dots the icon or cogwheel icon it shows all the options uh, you have here so again you can reorder your project you can manage system which is the same as this blue button you can manage your global teams so if you have some groups of people you consistently add to to every project so instead of adding these people to every new project you can create global teams and uh, i will send you a link for manage system because i recorded uh, you know kind of pre-recorded walkthrough for what you can do for manage system so i will not talk a lot about it unless you have questions and it will tell you like how to remove a user how to add a user what are global teams so these are global teams you can access from here you can see gun for projects Again, if you go to documentation to Gantt, you will see a section for Gantt for projects, what it is. Uh, you know, if you want to see here on top section, show recent projects, you can turn it on. Uh, and if you don't like these quotes, you put your like motivational quotes, you can hide them. Uh, and again, almost on every page, on this page, again, there is an option too. If you go to any project, uh, inside a project, let's say tasks, again, you see cogwheel icon, there are lots of options here for tasks, right? So it's a project tasks, 
Kogel icon gives you all the extra options. And this is a task list, uh, kind of like a project group for projects, task list. Again, options here for task list. What I can do with the task list? I can add a task, I can edit list, I can archive list, same as a current projects. We allow you, you know, like if you have a task list with everything completed here, or maybe a few tasks are not, you can move them to new task list and you can archive this one and then you can go to your archived view archive task lists and uh, you can put them back as a list make active or just browse find something you need so in a in a long project it makes sense to archive or you can copy a list uh, to another project or you can move it to another project you can you know delay all the tasks or reschedule them to be completed sooner so uh, pay attention to the three dots in Cogwheel. Even for tasks, you see I have three dots, copy, move, shift dates, delete task, and some frequent actions like edit and then add subtasks uh, are brought here. So you don't need to click. You can just click here to add subtask, edit, and extra options here. And if you click on a task, again, three dots, all the extra options here. So you you click on the tasks task you see it uh you know you can remove this is a quick action so it's completed reset progress will make it not started remove assignment will remove myself from being assigned edit will open the big pop-up where you can edit everything and here you have extra options so if you don't want to see subtasks you can hide them you can add subtasks you can copy or move you can add tags you can delete it so this is kind of general navigation stuff where uh, like even if you don't know something or if you miss something like these three dots will show you the option uh, typically they are in a in a section they will be in the right top corner in the cogwheel but sometimes they will be next to the item uh, here but they mean there are extra actions hidden underneath uh so projects again you can filter by what what what's your preferred order or recently visited by you and from here you jump to project board so this is a relationship between this link here and this board this is calendar board again everything across across all projects you are part of if you want to see on your agenda you just click it here if you want to see like what everyone doing this week uh, and check it from here you can go to full calendar and full calendar is again it's a calendar board so task board here you can see all your tasks across all projects by default uh, it's highly recommended to create this saved filters and you save them by you, know, you see this is late selected overview so how I created it I selected progress no progress or in progress and due date in the past right so this is late tasks then i clicked save search gave it a name late and it was saved here if i okay. no longer use this filter i can delete it so if i unclick it it will be like absolutely all tasks across all projects if i want to pro to filter by project group i can also do it like i can select project group frit camp and i can save it and I can say, you know, Fritcam project group. So you can see all tasks could be a huge list across all projects in that group, particular group. Or you can select multiple projects, you know, you, you want to and say, this is projects I manage and this is late tasks if you select progress. Uh, so I created like what's what's been worked on, like what's tasks, what show me all tasks across all projects which are currently in progress. And uh, you know, this is overdue, this is already not right. So I have to ping this person to, to ask them to change the due date because if they're working it, they have to adjust it uh, to make it real. Uh, or as a manager, for example, I want to see not assigned tasks. Maybe that's important for me. You can also set, you know, not assigned, assigned to uh, unassigned and progress. Maybe you're interested in no progress or in progress, but also you may be interested in tasks uh, 
uh, which are not assigned and uh, also overdue again. So you, you go to due date and in the past. Uh, and this will show you unassigned overdue. You see, so nobody will be able to complete them on time because it's, it's due in 2012 and it's not started. So obviously, it's, it's something either, in our case, it's a project which where we, we store tasks. Uh, we delayed for a longer period of time. So we do not lose them, but we move this task because we can move tasks to other projects. We just created for it camp task world project. So this is a project name because it's a task board. Uh, this thing is a project name. If I hover, it, it will tell me what project group it is. And this is task list name in this project. And this is a task. So everything currently chunked to this section project name. Uh, task list name, project name, task list name, project name. But we will create here a view where you can unchunk and sort all tasks, say, by due date without putting them into sections because right now sorting will be within each section. So if you sort by due date, it will sort these three task, tasks by due date within this list, which is project name and task list name. Uh, this is how it's done, and uh, and for example, it, this is all my overdues across all projects, uh, and it's nothing. Again, I user assigned to Igor progress, no progress in progress, due date in the past. So that's the task board. Here you can see only tasks across all projects, filtered by project group. You can create filters. You have your options here. Collapse, expand all subtasks. Collapse, expand all task lists. You can switch to Kanban view. You can switch to Gantt view. Uh, you can export time records in projects because we don't have time board for people who track time, but we just temporarily added here export time records across all projects for the last 30, 60 on all days because some people want to pull you know, time effort across projects. So it's temporarily parked here, but we will definitely add a time board in the future. And there are other options here as well. In calendar, so uh, it's much more powerful tool. First of all, it's a different medium of delivering information. Here you have your day view, week view, agenda view. But here, uh, again, your saved filters will be on top so if i want to see my tasks in calendar and it will not only i called it my task but actually it's uh, i am assigned and progress no progress and in progress and for meetings we consider for meetings which uh, haven't started yet they are kind of assigned to me like if i'm invited to a meeting and this meeting haven't passed in time it's kind of assigned to me. So if you if you want to see everything on your agenda, like in a daily recap in calendar, uh, you can select here assigned to me and progress, no progress or in progress. So just don't select completed. And you will see like everything, your tasks and everything uh, in one view. But in, in calendar, you can see not only tasks, but as I said, you can see events, your meetings, which you create directly in calendar. Uh, because this is a global calendar, if you click on something, uh, we, we open this thing called quick add. It's here on top with a plus. Uh, you can access from anywhere, not necessarily from calendar board. But here, if you click on a day, we don't know what you want to create for what project. So first, we offer you to select the project. Then we ask you what you want to create. Do you want to create issue or task? And you create a task and it will be shown in, on a calendar or you can select multiple days right and then again you create task and days will be pre-selected so april 3rd april 6 here what i selected so to six and if you're in a weekly view and you want to create a meeting you can just select your time again you will in this case i want to create calendar event and time not only dates but on also time will be pre-selected and if you it's, if it's kind of conference and it starts you know on Wednesday uh, you can show full day you can show business hours but no matter what if it starts like 11 and ends you know next day at 7 uh, you can do that too 
uh, just select multiple days. So April 3rd, 11 to April 5th, uh, you know, 8 p.m. Uh, and once you created it, you can drag and drop, uh, resize it to change, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So your day view, your week view. Let me remove a filter. Uh, month view and agenda view. Again, this is across all projects. So monthly view could be a little bit overwhelming if you show everything. And again, cogwheel icon. Uh, some people, the, why we created this calendar, some people like it because if they want to show a lot of stuff, they use deadline view. A deadline view shows only something starts or ends and uh, it shows errors. If it's item without start, it will be just shown here, CRM task. Oh, sorry, this is an issue tracker. This is a uh, issue need, uh, kind of issue report it needs to be fixed by 27. So there is issue icon. Uh, you will see your events. Uh, if you use milestones, you will see milestones. Uh, so pretty much everything with uh, start date and due date will be shown on calendar. In deadline view, this task is due because arrow pointing to the left side. This task is a start date because arrow pointing to the to the right side. Uh, you can uh, change it just by dragging, dropping the the task to another day. In standard view, so uh, everything will be like in Google Calendar. So multi-day tasks they will on multi-day events they will span uh, you know days so you will actually see this this particular task issue uh, sorry task starts on 25th and ends on 28th but for people who have a lot of projects it stretches calendar to to a lot of high uh, very very uh, you know stretched cells so we create a deadline view where we show for each day only that start and end date uh, for here again with filters uh, you know my meetings or everyone's not completed on a calendar very easy uh, again if it's too too bright for you you can change the color scheme or if you want this you can you can change uh, you can change this ones too uh, again if you want to push it to Google Calendar say you 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 created you know my tasks and I want to see this in Google Calendar. I just go here, share calendar filtered. So with filtered, we will actually maintain your calendar as you see it on, on the screen. So if it's your tasks, it will be pushed to external calendar. You, you can give it a name and it will be there as your tasks across all projects. So you don't need to go to each project and sync it with your Outlook or Apple Calendar or Google Calendar. For Google Calendar, so we have uh, on all paid plans, if you use Google Calendar, it's better to use Google Calendar. If you use Outlook or Apple Calendar, you can generate a link uh, and uh, you will copy it and you will paste it to your software and it will pull data from FreedCam. If you use Google, use this option on top, sync to Google Calendar, because it will be instant. As soon as, like, if it's your tasks not completed, if you complete a task or event now in, is in the past, uh, so for yesterday, it will actually be removed from your Google Calendar physically. We'll just, you know, like a point operation. We will say update or remove this item from this calendar. So as soon as it happened, in a few minutes, it's done in Google. This link, if you put a link like import external calendar in Outlook. Outlook pulls like twice a day or three times a day, just tell FreedCamp, uh, give me items for this calendar. Uh, FreedCamp pushes it to Outlook. Outlook deletes everything in that calendar and puts new items. That's how, if you import external calendar, this is how update happens. And for Google, we have this instant uh, and very precise uh, way for updating stuff in uh, Widgets, it's kind of same as home page, but where you have more uh, creative control. Uh, again, there is a good page in tutorials and support which describes each type of widget. And widget is just a box. Uh, and we have this many types of widgets. You can create any and you can create multiple uh, widgets uh, of the same type 
but with different filters because you can select different filters you can give it a different name you can save it and it will be here with this name and if you need to change your filter or rename it you can do it if you want to delete it you just click on this x and you can rearrange uh, these ones could be could be supporting information for your home page and each user can set it up at their liking so this is if you track time you can select and create time widget and you can say assign to igor and you can call it my time but maybe you can you know you want to select all and uh, if you want to do uh, you know date descending i can call it last 20 entries of the team for example right and now it's completely different widget and i see last 20 entries like who was working on what and how long did it take and it's actual data from frit camp you see uh, this is our uh, engineer who work on mobile application i can i can see what exactly he was doing and uh, by person it's very easy to see uh, what's happening here uh, very easy to rearrange uh, again so you just drag and drop from here you have three columns and in each column you have multiple you can have multiple uh, widgets and on business plan and enterprise you have reports I they are they updated every time you load a page so you don't need to refresh anything here uh, you can select multiple projects in each report you can click on each project to see the stats uh, you have summary button which will summarize all projects in a report and show you the su summary all these charts now for the all projects here when you click summary button uh, again Cogwheel icon for the options a new report edit report remove report so it's pretty much self descriptive here when you create a new report you don't need to specify start and end date it will pick it up for you uh, if you're interested how we calculate this percentage of project completion so if I go to free camp development it says 94 percent complete just click this question mark it points to documentation which explain how it how we calculate it because it's not just uh, it's not it's no longer uh, completed tasks versus uh, not completed because in a project as you can assume you can have one task one day and another task you know nine days and if one day task is completed the project is clearly not 50 percent completed because you have another task which is nine times longer than the first one so it will actually calculate this based on duration of the tasks as well so it's 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 much better as long as you use start dates and due dates uh, for tasks it, it will be much better so here you have your overdue tasks you can click and quickly access uh, this one is completed now completed so they're not a problem but they've been completed after the due date set so if you want to review them you can click it and again quick access to tasks with no assignment so this is a global ones uh, here you have global search uh, so you can search anything across your projects again you can filter by application so if you are looking for tasks across all projects then you can type what you're looking for you know like Trello and uh, created by uh, me and uh, you know last three months for example I'm looking for this text uh, in uh, let's say in discussions applications uh, created by me and in last three months so there is nothing uh, but let's extend it to uh, six months yep so I found the discussion and I can open it uh, bookmarks I use for pages in because we have multiple projects I just bookmark everything I need sometimes I bookmark stuff for meetings if I want to discuss something during a meeting I just add meeting point one meeting point two it's very easy on any page you just click it and add shortcut and it will give you option to name it and it will be added here it's kind of 
bookmarks uh, for FreedCamp inside FreedCamp. And if you don't need it, uh, you can uh, just delete one particular one. Uh, notifications, my account, here you have access to your settings, uh, your personal settings, but also as a, as a manager, you have access here to subscriptions where you see your account status, invoices and history, your plan details. If you were invited by other people like me, uh, you will see that I'm invited by Angel and he's on enterprise plan. I was invited by Paula Test, he's on enterprise plan. I was invited by customer, he's on enterprise. So this is my involvement in other people accounts where I'm not actually the owner of the stuff, but I'm invited. And uh, it says I am on enterprise plan, but most of the users uh, should see yourself uh, as a, with your plan in my teams. And you, it will say you can actually create, you, they will see you as a free plan. Uh, it says free here and you, and uh, the, the team should understand that in FreedCam, each person has a count. If I, you invited me to your projects, I will have access to all the features you're paying for if you're paying for in your projects. But I personally can actually upgrade my account to business plan. I can be invited by you to free uh, and you have a free account. I will have access to free features in your projects. But if I upgrade my account to business, if I'll start creating project groups in my account, and inviting people, I will be paying them uh, the business plan fee for these people who are invited to my project. So there is always, I am invited to someone's teams, like here is, we call it your teams, is where you invited to, and there is you and your personal account. Only on enterprise plan, we don't allow people who the owner of the enterprise plan invited, we don't allow them to create their project groups and have own projects. So always uh, part of projects, the main account owner invited them to, and you can allow them to create projects in your account by setting them as a group administrator, which is a managed system page where I will send you a link to separately recorded video because then it will be a very big uh, talk for me. You you can just listen my explanations and just ask me questions. Uh, so that's your teams. And uh, if you're not part of any team and you're the owner of everything you can see through camp, you will not even see this option. It means all the projects you see in project groups, they're your own. Yeah. One click login, you can set it uh, like if you want to log into FreedCamp quickly, you know, on login page, we have login with Google, with Twitter. It means if you connect here with your account and you're logged in in Google, you can just click that button and you will see FreedCamp straight away. You don't need to type your email and password. Uh, so you can unlink, disconnect from LinkedIn. So in my particular case, I'm connected to LinkedIn account. So if I log out now and I will click on the tiny LinkedIn icon. As long as I logged into LinkedIn, uh, FreedCamp will not ask my uh, email and password. Just easy. Uh, single sign-on is what we test for enterprise customer. Uh, backups is where you can actually say, depending on your plan, uh, how frequently you want backups to be done. And this is something not we do for business kind of uh, high availability of the business and it's you know continuity it's for you it's for you to be able to actually select a day and know that someone deleted some important files somewhere after first on second of april so you can go to first of april you can open your backup you can find your files you can put them back to free camp it's not something we can restore for you but it's snapshots of everything you typed all the files you uploaded to FreedCamp uh, and on enterprise plan you have options daily, weekly and monthly and the default will be daily. On business you have weekly option and monthly, weekly means every Monday and on freelancer plan you have only monthly option which is the first day of the month so we, we do it every month for the freelance users but for enterprise it's done daily. Again, there are two options, is a zip file or a browsable page. So browsable page means uh, for some customers whose backups are like, um, you know, 200 gigabytes of data, if they want to restore one file, if they use this, 
they will have to download 200 gigabytes zip file, unzip it, find the file, put it back. If they have browsable version, uh, they can just uh, you know click open button for the particular day, and they will see their backup. They can go to their project groups. They can go to their projects. Uh, they they find the project. They find you know files, and this is all your files backed up for first of April. And you can click on it and download it. You don't need to download 200. So it's basically the whole the whole tree structure here uh, for you to find out any XML or XLS file with your tasks. All the comments, everything pretty much will be here, uh, and only you have access. So if you upgrade it, you have access to this page, but your team doesn't. Only you can do this stuff. If you're an enterprise, you can set white label to brand your free camp. Uh, if you, the sub subscriber, again, there is email in, uh, which you, you can enable, and then other people can use it. Uh, it's like a function which is a main account owner should should actually uh, turn on uh, in uh, in the help page. Uh, open, yeah. I just I will show you where it is. So that's called emailing into Fritcamp. This article in documentation. Uh, yeah. So just just check it if you're interested. What email in data feed links again in help. It's here data feed links. Uh, it's kind of ability to enable a function which allows people to grab a link from their interface inside the project and then pull those tasks to Excel or Google Sheets and create a custom reports. Again, you don't need even to go to help because everywhere here we provide a link uh, to documentation. So if as administrator you're wondering how and why it's here, you can always uh, custom fields again, uh, there is a link to documentation. You can create templates. Only you can create these templates. Each template has a name and a set of fields. And then project group administrators, people who create projects in your account, or you, when you create a project, or you can go and edit the project, you can apply these templates, and it will actually add these extra fields to your tasks. So you can, you can, you can just, I suggest if you're interested like in adding certain fields, maybe you need extra status or you need some order number or you need some extra, you know, sometimes people like if they work with content, they want, you know, approved by customer, you know, proofread it, translated, uh, released and published. They, they need these extra statuses, which they can obviously use tags now to do, but text is kind of a free form. Here you can just add a drop down and just add it to project. It will be, you know, extra status drop down with your values. And you actually specify the values. So if if you if you go to edit it, you will see actually what values and you can add them. So in here is status, you know, ordered, shipped and received. Uh, so you can actually specify what that drop down name and what the drop down values will be and you can say it, it's mandatory so uh, people have to fill it when they create a task or edit a task that's custom fields again here is documentation you can you can read it create test project add create template uh, right now what's important is only you can create these templates but people who can create projects including you can add one multiple templates to a project to to customize it calendars is personal it's what you created as i was uh, talking to you uh, explaining how to share calendars and uh, this is every every calendar you shared uh, you can review here so you can see actually what the filters were you can click to see this calendar in free camp if it was instant google sync it will be this icon and you can delete it uh, or if you created a link for like apple calendar or outlook this will be uh, kind of uh, muted and this link will be shown so this is shared with a link again you can delete it if you want and this line will disappear so these two calendars for me shared via google sync and this one shared with a link and uh, this two identical, for example. If I want to delete it, I can delete it. And if you delete this one, it will ask uh, 
do you want to delete calendar in Google? Because we can also find the calendar with this name, which we actually connected to and deleted there. So you don't even need to to, uh, to go to Google and uh, so if I'll, I click delete the calendar on Google, it will now actually stop syncing and will go to my Google account and delete the calendar in there. Uh, so just just uh, a lot of automation and again, Cogwheel icon in this case provide extra options for this page. API is for people who want to integrate with Zapier or they they have some resources where they can write actual code to pull, so you can generate your API keys. Uh, for Zapier, again, you can you can click here. What is possible? Zapier is a service which allows you to connect any application to any application, like Google Mail to FreeCamp, or you know FreeCamp to Google Sheets, or you know some forms uh, collect collection to create the tasks. So there are a bunch of options to either when something happens somewhere, push it to FreeCamp, or when something happens in FreeCamp, push it out to some other system. Uh, that's Zapier. And uh, again, there is a help page here. Tax is where you can, s because if you use tax, you can select here and search. But since we have search global search by tag here, this mostly can be used to manage. So these ones you can actually tags in your projects, you can delete them. So you can select tags which people created maybe by mistake and you can delete selected tags here. So it's place and tags in projects you invited to. Right now you can search as well. So you can select multiple tags and these numbers actually show you how many items tagged with this tag. You can also search right now, but we will remove search from here. It's too much. Uh, this place will be just for you to actually delete, maybe edit some tags your team created. Maybe someone someone created a duplicate uh, tag, meaning the same stuff. Someone maybe made a typo, and everyone now sees it when they do tags, apply tags to the tasks. Uh, uh, Two-factor authentication, you can enable it if you're on enterprise plan, will force every person invited to install application, uh, uh, read the QR code, and then you know what it is. So you, you type your email and password, and then another field pops up asking you to enter the, uh, you know, four, four or six digits, which your application will generate. You should, you should additional security for your team accounts and this is uh, just for staff nobody can see this it's is is it's only in my personal account as a fritcam team member so this is my options here and the notification settings we already covered uh, <clears throat> this email daily digest it's everything across your all your projects even if you don't follow like one big huge mail with everything which happened in your Fred camp uh, for for by default it's off when people sign up who you invite uh, but as a manager you may be interested to have in your in your email box like everything uh, you know just just you be able to search uh, in in these emails in your email box for something and maybe easier way for you to find information or just for tracking purposes, like one email a day with absolutely everything which was happening in FreeCamp, regardless of if you subscribed or if you assigned to it. Uh, so most likely for the managers, this option by default is off. And here uh, you can ask your team to update profiles because everywhere in FreeCamp uh, you can, uh, uh, anywhere in uh, if if you open something let's say uh if i click on a task uh, profile will be shown here so for he, for for this guy he doesn't have his profile field he has just email and no phone uh, you can see the difference between your time zone and his time zone so he's 14 hours behind me and he's in utc minus four and this is his local time uh, but if profile is filled like mine, you have much more information and we basically ask people 
all this to uh, complete their profile it's much easier to see especially if you have people from somewhere it actually depends if you want people to know each other better in your projects you will ask if not probably don't don't mention it uh, uh, that's my count uh, also on enter enterprise plan you have access to project overview application which is pretty new where uh, it's on the on the left side it's uh, called overview uh, here you will have your project description uh, who owns the project who created and when and recap page will be not like personal recap it's only what requires immediate attention is basically overdue and today like what should be happening today in this project so as a manager you can go to overview you can check if you want to see like what's what this project is about if you have too many and you can't remember you can go to recap to see what's broken in this project and you see what should be happening today like these tasks by these people should be completed this task should be started and this is broken tasks it's overdue you know hundreds day overdue 24 days in a normal project it shouldn't be it shouldn't be um, it's just something uh, we have certain task lists where we basically don't care if something is overdue so it's fine it's it's red camp development but it's under control you also have this people section in project overview where you can see everyone in this free camp development project you if they're from different company this is a project title this is their phone uh, you can click on a person and see their profile you can even here select multiple people and you can start a new discussion in this project or you can create a new task and these people will be subscribed or you can just email a few people and say hey uh, please update your tasks I see a lot of tasks overdue in uh, this project for you for you and you can just email click email button and uh, send email to a few people uh, mostly this was done for people where there are people coming from different organization and it's good for them to get to know each other before actually jumping to projects so they can read who is who click and uh, you know check people's profile profiles where they're where they're working what's their position and uh, you know maybe check their LinkedIn page uh, mostly for that recap is probably the most interesting thing in project overview and if you have a big long project description it's nice to read them here as well we will definitely extend this application there are lots of opportunities it will be project managers concept introduced in free camp so you can add actually people who manage this project not only who created it and who owns it but also who is personally responsible for delivering you will be able to set due date here for the project and see if your tasks actually uh, you know in uh, in conflict or there is a risk that it will be not completed you will be able to set kind of green yellow and uh, red statuses for the project and you will also as a project manager we will you will also be able to post updates and the latest one will be shown and the other ones will be collapsed you can read and you can send uh, you can say I set the project status now to red uh, because you know we have these two people sick and the customer added extra tasks uh, which actually for example they change the scope of a project and it's now 20% more work to do that's why it's red we need to have a meeting something like that so everyone who will visit will actually see the history of status updates and this uh, red green yellow status is how they evolved and maybe if due date was changed it will also be appended to status update so it will say this project manager changes due date for this project change the status and he typed type this uh, by explaining why these changes were made so there are lots of potential here it's only at this stage it's only enterprise plan application but we probably will uh, put certain things to uh, to uh, business plan as well maybe a shorter version where the enterprise plan will enjoy the, the full one uh, 
I probably will show you uh, just a few things if you're not yet uh, in a rush to go, unless uh, we should wrap up and you don't have more time. Um, not that I don't have more time, but I think that going through just all of the like navigation at the top of the page and then um, each kind of section in depth, I feel like all my questions got uh, really answered. So I guess were the things you're going to review just kind of like additional um, items or are they like kind of crucial to the use of Freed Camp? Because um, I think that there's so many, there's a lot of capability here. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just talk about tasks because tasks kind of uh, what everyone uses. Discussions and very easy to understand. Is you are not ready maybe to start a task or you're talking to a customer or you're talking to a team. You generally will not create a task for that. You go to discussion. You will invite people. Based on that discussion, you make decide to create tasks in your project. But this is kind of typical task list. And uh, you can switch, like each person can switch to Kanban view. And if you're on business plan, you can switch to GAN view from here. Uh, I will use list view uh, because that's where the most, the, the easiest way to demonstrate. So these are the task lists. Again, you can collapse them all. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot or you can expand them. If you want to rearrange them, it's very easy. You just click here, uh, the first option, Manage Task List. If I want to put this one you know, as a second, I can just drag and drop it. And now this task list uh, will go here. If I want to uh, rename it, again, I just, I just add, you know, and some description here. Very easy to do. This is a task list. So they are kind of like project groups for projects. Uh, very really easy to rearrange, as I just showed you. For tasks, again, it's very, if if you're sorting order, set to set order, you will have this uh, gray labels next to tasks, mm -hmm. which means that you can actually drag and drop tasks between the task lists, right? So if you want to organize your project visually, you can create your task list. If it's a short project, you probably just have, you know, tasks or will keep default task list. But generally, people actually rename it and it's much easier to absorb tasks like development tasks, test tasks, design tasks or, you know, uh, prepare, you know, run and analyze if you're running campaigns, for example something like that. So you know that you have to go through these tasks and this task and this. For creating subtasks, again, it's very easy. You just you just pull task to the right side and it will create a subtask. And you can do even this. So you go to from task list to task list and create sub subtasks. So on a all paid plans you can create unlimited some subtask. If you want to break the dependency, you can just pull it here. Now, you know, this is just task and this is task with subtask. So you very easy to organize it, you know, hierarchically splitting big chunk of work into smaller ones with, with just with just your mouse. And if you want to assign people, you will have your people here on a on a uh, right side with labels. In this case, it's just me in this project, so it's one label. But you will you can assign tasks like this. Uh, you can set priorities like that, you know, by drag and dropping. Uh, if you want to start a project, uh, a task, you can drop in in progress label, or you can just click this icon and it will start it. So now it's in progress. If I want to complete started task, I just click it again, or I can drop complete label here. Same for dates. If you if you if you want to do like if you want to set a few start dates, you can select like tens and twenty fours, and you can just uh, you can just start dropping you know your labels here. Then for due dates, you can do the same. If you don't want to click and edit, uh, you can just you can just uh, select dates you want uh, to put and put them in. Uh, that's kind of a short, you know, it's a good knowledge to have because it saves you a lot of time. In Kanban, you don't have this capability right now, but 
uh, in Canva, what's important to have is this: you have this uh, views which allows you to have to see more or less information. If if you uh, don't want to see the the colon, you can click it and it will be collapsed. But if you collapse all three columns, all the tasks will be very tiny. So and collapse, and collapse, and collapse. And if you if you're changing the task status here in Canva, you just drag and drop task from no progress to in progress. That's how you do it. And if you want to change something, you'll have to edit it right now. But we improve it. We are improving the interface to make it quicker and uh, you will be able to edit stuff and change uh, easier in Frit camp as well uh, in here if if i pull this one to the in progress status it will not only change this task to in progress but it will break relationship between this task and this subtask so you cannot uh, in kanban view you cannot change subtask status without moving the top one that's kind of uh, because we have this advanced subtasks, uh, uh, you know, if I move this one, it will move the whole kind of chain. If I move this back, it actually breaks relationship between this and this. This is not longer subtask of that. It's independent. Uh, just something to be aware of. And if you wanna, you know, change subtask status, you can just, as I said, you can click and change uh, this could be in progress it could be completed but columns here is always status of the top level task subtask could be not matching right and if you want to change the status you can you can uh, you can also edit and save so this this task is in progress but it has two subtasks subtasks one of them is not started it's kind of should be in this column and this could, should be in this, but because they are related, uh, we didn't find any easy way which customers easily understand how to un unchain this chain and uh, actually show, this probably doesn't make sense in Kanban view. Either people don't use subtasks if they use Kanban or they actually understand the, the meaning that you cannot do that because it will break uh relationship it's no longer a subtask it's a separate task and it's completed because i pulled it into completed column yeah that's 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 all, all i can fit into one hour and